on everybody welcome back to my channel we are back with a review of pose baby yes this is season two episode four never knew love like this before y'all this episode was so damn emotional i loved every bit of it let's get into the review but before we do if you have not done so just yet make sure you subscribe to my channel let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever i upload new content all right y'all let's get it so it starts off they at the ball right and of course they start off they start off jamming they was jamming to love bizarre you know that that's what we are we all want to love bizarre like they getting that in that what was that um i think it was prince and and um sheila e well whoever it was it was fucking jamming but um and so the category was lofting. So Pray Tell's calling out all the Banshee boys, all the tops, all the B-boys, get out there and do your thing. Now, he wanted to do a spin on the Madonna's Vogue, right? You know, everybody's crazy about the Vogue. So he wants to do a spin on what they've been doing, right? And so the guys are coming out there. They're doing a damn thing. This one guy comes out there. I mean, he comes flipping up on the goddamn scene. He starts flipping and flapping, doing everything the goddamn B-boys do. And so he gets 10 across the boards, right? And so pray tell us, like, you know, does anybody else want to step up to the plate? Anybody else think they're good enough to come against these guys? Like, let me know. The floor is yours, right? Gets quiet for a moment. Next thing you know, out walks Miss Candy. Now, from the beginning, I knew this episode was going to be mostly about Candy. You can see that from the previews that they've been showing for for the last two weeks. I had to go two weeks without fucking pose. Really? Really? But, um... Anywho, I'm back. I got my fix. And they did me just, they did me so good. Thank you, FX. Thank you, Pose. Mm, you have to bitch out. But um, anyways, so Candy comes out. Candy got on the throwback Madonna outfit where she got on like that business suit looking thing with the cone titties and like the little glass eye thing, whatever. She come out there, you know, doing her thing or whatever, right? immediately pray tell starts clocking her ass he like okay here we go with this bitch what is you doing like you ain't even part of the category like this is not right what is wrong with you what are you doing and she's like why are you always clocking me pray tell you are always clocking me you always got something to say whenever i come up here you supposed to be about um us coming out and us sticking together in a sisterhood, but you always coming for me. Why is that? And and he's like, when they start going back and forth, back and forth. Pray tell is like clocking her ass left and right. She like, you said he putting me down. He said, I can't put you down when you already low down. Like, they clocking each other back and forth, right? And so finally, she's like, fuck you, pray tell. Judges, what is my score? Judges give her some fucked up scores. Seven, five, zero. Like, she was not that bad. True enough, it wasn't a category, but it's candy. You know, candy gonna do what the fuck candy does. So, she gets pissed and she leaves. But before she leaves, she tells, tells Pray Tell, you gonna regret this. And he like, yeah, bitch, whatever. So, she goes and she walks off. So, Blanca and um, Pray Tell go and see Nurse Judy, right? They go see Nurse Judy at the um, at the clinic or the hospital or whatever where she's working at. And so, Pray Tell thinks that they're coming together to talk about um, the, the cabaret. I think that's what he said it was, the cabaret or something like that that's coming up. And so, Blanca really brought Pray Tell there so that he, um, Blanca and Judy both can have a conversation with him about starting the AZT pills. Because as we know, Blanca's already been on them. She has not had any bad side effects from it. And they're showing um, Pray Tell her blood work that her numbers have actually gone up. Now, Pray Tell instantly gets pissed. He's like, you know, why the hell would you go to her and why would you tell her what my business is? Because Blanca also told Nurse Judy when um, Pray Tell was at her house a few days ago when he was in there making some goddamn hole. He wants to go a holistic approach he don't want to take the medicines because of course he doesn't want to get sick off of that he doesn't want to put poison in his body so the holistic route that he's been doing is he was in Blanca's kitchen like prior to that and he was cooking up um, butter and mineral water and he was eating he said something he heard you eating five pounds of butter and mineral mineral rot, mineral water mix would help to bring down or help, you know, bring up your numbers when it comes to HIV. And Nurse Judy is like, what the hell makes you think that that is okay? Like, that's not good. Pratel gets pissed. He's like, look, first of all, I can't believe this bitch went and told you my business. The only reason why I, why I was over there is because my burner was out on my stove and I need to use her stove. Had I known that she was going to come back to you and run her mouth like this, I never would have went over there in the first place. Like, he 
gets pissed. And what they just want him to realize is like, look, you got a lot of lot, lots of life left to live. And we don't want you to just think that you can just take this holistic approach and that's going to, you know, cure everything. Because back then, AIDS was super new. To the, there was no education on it. There was no medication that they could afford on it. And so when you do have those medications available to you, the opportunity that you take to not take them is a, it's a big fucking deal. And so he gets pissed. He leaves. He's like, look here, I need to go back and I need to revive the rest of my day that you bitches have already ruined. He gets pissed, baby. He takes his red pocketbook and he dizzes out of there. Y'all, so Pray Tell is at a diner with three other MCs that um they um MC other balls like across across New York, like in Brooklyn, New York, Manhattan, you know, yeah, 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 right? And so they're all sitting down talking about, again, the cabaret that's coming up, and then plus they are talking about people need to pay their dues because these trophies don't buy their damn selves because, you know, back then it wasn't no prize money. It was trophies that they won at these balls, right? And so they're trying to think of a new category to come up with that people can participate in. And so one of the MCs said that, you know, people are, are trying to come up now on this lip syncing, and and pray tell is completely and totally against lips lip syncing. He's like, look, if they want to lip sync, they can go down there to the village and lip sync to Patty LaBelle for the white boys that are wearing jeans. Cause that ain't what we do here. And so as he's saying that, baby candy is in a booth next to them listening to everything that they're saying right and so he like oh well bitch you stalking me and she was like no i heard y'all were gonna meet here and so i came to give you my two cents about why we need to be doing lip singing before you completely shut it down like she's trying to tell them lip singing is gonna be the new wave the new everything like and it made me of course think of rupaul lip sync for your life love rupaul so um they're like, well, no, we ain't finna do that. That ain't what we about. You know, yada, yada, yada. Get your ass on somewhere, Candy. Because, you know, Candy crazy. So after he shuts her ass down about that, she gets mad. Next thing you know, Candy pulls out a butter knife on his ass. Stands over Preetown. Preetown like, what, bitch, you gonna stab me in broad daylight? Do it, bitch, do it. So she's like, hey, I'm gonna let your goddamn ass make it. But you need to listen to what the fuck I'm trying to tell you now. Lip singing is the way to go. So she turns and she walks away. And they all like, what the fuck is wrong with her? Next thing you know, this bitch turned around, start throwing salt and pepper shakers. I'm like, wait a goddamn minute. Candy, calm your goddamn ass down. She turns around, motherfuckers. Boy, then pray tell was like, she's she must be a Scorpio. Hey, I ain't gonna say nothing about Scorpios, but Candy played y'all good. She played y'all real damn good. So it's later that night, they're back at the ball, and there's a category that's going on. I don't know what, if it was birdcage or what, but a bitch had a whole birdcage on her head with the birds in it. The shit was wild, man. Shit was then wild. Then Blanca comes up to Angel and tells Angel, like, look, I need you to come to the back with me. Like, it's an emergency. So Angel goes back there. Um, no, Blanca goes back there with Angel. And Lulu's back there. Lulu's crying. She's saying that she has not seen Candy in a few days. She hasn't come home. She hasn't. She didn't uh, show in for her. She didn't show up for her two shifts at work. So that's when Lulu finally tells... Um, Blanca, that aside from her working at the strip club, she had been turning tricks down at a motel at the same time. So she asked Lulu, had she gone down there to the motel to see when she's there? She's like, no, I don't want to go down there by myself. So Blanca ends up going down there with Lulu to the motel. Now, first when they get there, the motel um, clerk at the front, he was a real asshole. They asked like, hey, are we looking for our friend named Candy? He like, it's a bunch of girls here. And... They try to show him a picture. He's like, yeah, I don't know who the fuck she is. He ain't trying to pay her no goddamn mind. And so Lulu tells him, like, you know, she always asks for room 44 because she there's a vanity mirror in there that she loves. And I see the keys are missing to 44. Can we go to that room? And he's like, hell no. You know, I'm not going to be responsible for nothing that goes on. I don't ask no questions. I sell these rooms by the hour. People come and they go all damn day. I don't know nothing about that's going on. So finally Block, like, Lulu getting ready to jump over that counter on his ass because they see, like I said, the keys are gone. So Blanca's like, look, I'm going to just leave you with my phone number. 
Call me if you hear from her. If something comes up, call me and let me know. He like, all right, cool. So they end up going back to the house and Blanca ends up organizing a search. Like she wants, you know, some of the kids go down to the piers. Other kids, I need you to go here. Uh, Poppy, I need you to stay on phone duty. Yada, 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 right? So she's organizing this search. And as they're organizing it, they get a phone call. Poppy answers it. And he's like, Ma, the phone's for you. She gets on the phone. She's like, yes, this is Blanca. And she makes this face like, oh my fucking God. So then after that, you have Blanca. Um, she's sitting on the couch. Angel has her head rested in her, uh, her head, you know, rested in her lap. And then Lulu comes to the house. She's like banging, beating on the door. She's like, look, hey. So Blanca finally opens the door. She's like, look, hey, have you heard anything? Like, what's going on? And Blanca's like, you know, hold on. We need to wait till, you know, Electra gets here. Lulu's like, no, fuck that. Let me know what's going on. If you found out something about my girl, let me know. So she's like, I just got a call from the hotel. Look, I don't know how to say this because they just called me, but Candy ain't coming home. Candy dead. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What you mean Candy dead? Like that, 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 that fucking shook me. I was not, I, I thought maybe she's going to be in the hospital. Maybe she's going to be in jail, but dead. Oh, I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> so what ended up happening to her was after they had left the clerk at the hotel thought something was suspicious with the room he thought something was but fishy was going on so he ended up sending the maid over there to clean up the room as the maid was cleaning up the room she discovered a bloody towel and she goes and she looks in the closet and candy is actually in the closet dead she got beaten to death by one of the tricks that was there at the hotel and so everybody's back at the house and it's like they're all drinking they're all sad. They're all crying. Angel is crying about how the government, the police, like nobody, society, don't nobody care about them. And it's like they have to stand up. They have to fight. And they have to be there for each other. They got to fight these motherfuckers out here in these streets, man. They, oh, that part was just so sad, y'all. It fucked me up for a minute. It really did. So Blanca, Nurse Judy, and um, Electra Abundance, they go down to um, where Nurse Judy works, right? Now, in the same building, I don't know if it's like vital statistics. I don't know what it is exactly, but they went there to try to get the release of Candy's body back to them because, of course, she didn't have no family. Angel tried to reach out to her parents. Her parents were not receiving her at all they they were not trying to fucking hear it right and so at first the guy's like nope sorry can't do it you know you asking me to do something illegal i can't do it so then nurse judy is like look you used to date my homeboy but you did his ass raggedy so just think about this think if y'all had it worked out 30 years from now, he dies on you, and y'all have had a 30-year relationship, but after he dies, you are not allowed any rights to his body. His family shuts you out completely. They won't even let you come in the hospital to be with him on his last days when his family hadn't been there this whole time, but you had been there. How would that make you feel? They hit that nigga right there because he was like, you know what? Write down the name of the funeral home that you want me to get her sent to, and I'll ship her over there. And that's exactly what he did. I, ooh, I was going to be mad if he didn't do that shit, but he did that shit. Good for you. When they finally get her to the funeral home, right, the funeral director, he is, like, proud of himself because he was the one that actually embalmed Candy. He got her ready, did her makeup and all that, right? So, um... Blanca, Angel, and Electra, they all get there first, of course, you know, so they can, you know, see her before everything starts. And so when they get there to see her, they are like, she, which she did. She looked good if she was somebody's 86 year old grandma on Women's Day at church. She looked, she looked a goddamn mess, y'all. I'm sorry. She looked a goddamn mess. The wig was horrible. The makeup was not where it was at. So, Angel was like, nah, -uh, that's that's my girl. I can't let her go out looking like my grandma or uh, my Aunt Edith or whatever. So she's like, look here, y'all. We got two hours. Let's fix her up. And that's exactly what they did. When it came back, everybody was there for the funeral. Miss Candy was done, snatched, looking like Miss Candy with her naturalness and all that. They did her good. They did her real good. Praytel actually delivered Candy's eulogy. And even though they did not get along a lot, he said that was still his sister. And he still had love for her. And he had some really, really kind, kind words for her. I love Billy Portia. Oh, I love, I love, I, I mean, Billy. I keep calling him Billy. But I, I love him. Billy Porter, Bobby Porter. I keep messing up his name. 
I love him. He is an excellent actor. He was on Law & Order SBU one time, and he acted his ass out. Ooh, he did good. So after Pray Tell is given his eulogy, he asks for a moment of silence, and he goes and sits back down. Next thing you know, he must have been praying to himself, asking for Candy to forgive him, because next thing you know, he hears Candy say, I forgive you, bitch. He looks up and it's Candy's ghost. She's there at her casket. She put a little cigarette out on her casket and all that. So she goes over there and she sits down and she talks to Pray Tell. She's like, why, why have you hated me this whole time? Why were you constantly coming for me? Why did you not give me a chance? Like anything I tried to do, you always shot me down. You, you, you never compliment. Like you were always coming for me. Why were you always coming for me? And he tells her you were everything that I tried to hide from society about myself. You're unapologetically loud, you're black, you're flamboyant, and you don't give a fuck. And you do not give a damn about walking out there, living in your truth, and you are who you are, and you own that. And that's something that Pray Tell always wished that he didn't have to hide from society. So, you know, they go kind of, not go back and forth, but they have a touching moment there, and... I thought that was so cute. Oh, yeah, and then uh, Pray Tell also tells Candy that basically he, she was everything that he wanted to be, but he was just too afraid to come out and be who he really was. And he always envied Candy for, uh, Candy. He always envied Candy for not being afraid who, for who she was and for living out in her truth. Lord, so Blanca's then next. Blanca is, I'm mean, sorry, not Blanca, um, Angel. Angel's up there. She's crying over Candy's casket, whatever. So Candy's ghost ends up coming to um, Angel and telling her, you know, basically, like, let my death be an example to you. Don't go back to them peers. Don't go back to doing what you used to do. And she's like, I don't do that no more. And she's like, good, because I want you to go out and, and follow your dreams, live your life. Don't think about a quick way to make a dollar. Go out and do it the right way. And she's, you know, crying like, I don't belong in that world. And yada, yada, yada. Candy's telling her, look, you be the first to go out there and you rep for us. You do you, bitch. Don't you better do you, bitch. So then she goes to um, Lulu and um, what Angel, and I'm sorry, Blanca actually had to talk Lulu into going there and seeing Candy because she didn't want to see her that way. So Angel held her hand and she went up there and so she was, as she was paying her respects to Candy, something in her just snaps. Next thing you know, this bitch starts, you thieving ass bitch starts grabbing her brooch, then trying to grab her scarves and trying to grab her hat. They had to drag her ass up out of there. Like she ended up snapping. She was going through some emotional shit. It was like, oh, goddamn, bitch, get her. <laughs> Black was like, is she taking her gloves? Like she was taking everything from her ass. She started tripping. So like I said, they had to grab her ass, carry her on, fuck up out of there. So she's sitting outside. She's smoking a cigarette, right? And so um, Candy ends up coming to Lulu then. And so her and Lulu share a moment because first Lulu was like, you know, I'm mad at you. I couldn't stand your ass, yada, yada, yada. And she tells her, look, like all the times that we had were not bad times. We had some really good times together. Like the time that they stole a fur coat out of Bloomingdale's, the time it was 20 below and they didn't have no heat and they had to snuggle up under that fur coat. Like she going to miss her girl. And you know what? Side note, I was looking at... um. Lulu, I, can't, I don't know Lulu's real name, but I was looking at her Instagram today and she was saying that that episode, her emotions were real because she had just lost a friend not too long before that and she kept everything bottled into herself. She didn't want the cash. She didn't want nobody to know because she wanted her feelings to be real and true and authentic and genuine and she's prettier in, I mean, guys, Lulu, you pretty on pose. You pretty on real life. Like, bitch. Mm. Do you, bitch? But yeah, I like that scene. It was it was sad, but she got to say her goodbyes, and she was good after that. So Blanca's sitting down, and um, Candy's ghost is sitting next to Blanca, and you know they're humming, "Yes, Jesus loves me." Then Electra comes over and interrupts that hum and tells Blanca, "Look, it's an old George and Weezy couple outside taking advantage of our refreshments. I'm gonna need you to go outside and do something about this shit." Blanca, like, what the fuck, you want me to do? She's like, I don't know, but go do something. So Blanca goes out there, come to find out it's Candy's parents. And so Blanca's like, you know, um, how did you know Candy? And of course, the mama's a bitch. She's like, Candy? Who the hell is Candy? And like, that was my son, and um, he, he wasn't no Candy. And so the dad was a lot more, you know, open to, you know, a lot more receiving of him and the, I mean, of her and the lifestyle that Candy was. And so... Blanca's like, look, you can come in, you can pay your respects. If it's any consolation, there were so many people that turned out 
to see candy. So come in and I'm hoping you say your respects, right? So the mom and daddy up there to pay their respects. First, Candy's ghost comes to um, her mom. And she's like, mama breaks down crying because mama feels guilty. That that whole time that she was shutting her out, that she could have been a part of her life that whole time. Because Candy was like, all them times that you caught me in your makeup and in your wigs, like you were the gateway for femininity, I mean feminine, <laughs> you were the gateway towards feminism for me, like, and for you to reject me and turn me away, like, that hurt me so bad. Mama felt so guilty, she was bawling, crying, and Candy ended up forgiving her. Then she goes to her dad, and oh, her dad scene is that one, and the next one I'm gonna tell you about, they, they made me cry. When Candy's ghost was talking to her dad, she was saying how much she loved her dad, how her dad saw her for who she was. And the first time she realized that her dad saw her for who she was, was it was Christmas and she wanted um, a dollhouse. And she pretended like she was asleep that night at Christmas while her dad snuck in her room and put the dollhouse together. And he was saying that he wanted to make sure that she got everything that she wanted for Christmas. And oh my God, that was so sweet. Oh, see, I'm getting it right there. Let me think about it. Oh, see, oh, I just thought that was so sweet for a black man to accept his son like that, that, and to accept her for who she was and loved her for who she was. That, mm, I, th I, th I thought that was good. So pray tell and the other MCs make an announcement that from there on out, they were starting a new category in Candy's honor, and it was going to be called Candy Sweet Refrain, and that was going to be a lip syncing category dedicated to Candy, and next is what had me crying. So pray tell calls um, the Paul Bears up, right? But before the call, Paul Bears up, Blanca had to go in and she pulled up her lighter, lighters up for candy. It was cute. But the Paul Bears came. They kind of, you know, turned Candy's casket around. And as they turned it around, like these doors opened up and they were at the ball, right? And so they pushed her little casket in. And then it was like she gets out of her casket and then she starts singing Never Knew Love Like This Before. Oh my God. That scene, I love that scene. I, I love to see the, the lip singing as it is, but to see her and to see her do it with such emotion and such conviction and lip singing for her life, as Paul Ru, or RuPaul would say, it was so fucking good. I love that scene. I love that scene. Loved it. So afterwards, they're all back at the house and they're having a dinner. And as they're having a dinner for a second, pray tell kind of drift off to himself. And you're like, hmm, kind of like what's on his mind. So the kids end up going out to the club or whatever. So Blanca and pray tell, they're left in the kitchen cleaning up the, you know, dishes like always. And so um, pray tell hands her a glass and asks her to fill up a glass of water for him. Next thing you know, he pulls out the bottle of AZT, AZT pills from his pocket he had gotten them from nurse judy he said he ended up going back to see nurse judy after the funeral he was looking at the kids he was thinking about the kids about how they feel like they have so much life left to you know and they can do anything that they want to do meanwhile he's over here not fighting for his life and so him and blanca end up toasting to life and they take their pills together and that was the end of the episode y'all i love this episode was it watch worthy? Absolutely. I know I gave you the review, but still, if you can, go back and watch the episode because I loved it. It was so good. Please let me know what you think about this video, and I will see y'all in the next video. Um, Black King Cruise coming up next. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.